Hello everyone. So welcome back to this channel once again. And in this video session, I will discuss how to check if a IFS directory exists in CL program or not. So basically earlier we can do this using the RPG program and by calling the procedure APIs. Now we can call those procedure APIs in CL as well. So uh let me explain you the background so the main thing here is the parameter passing by reference can be used in all the programming languages but as you all know that some unix type api require parameter passing by value basically they do require the parameter to be passed by the value and but in almost every case we pass the parameter by reference so uh what happens is uh, many procedure level APIs expect parameters to be passed by the value because they basically based upon the Unix type API. And now in CL, what uh, we can't do is we cannot pass the parameter by value. So we could only pass the parameter by reference in CL, but after uh, that is in V5R3, uh, the call PRC command was enhanced and it then allows us to choose whether the parameter is a pass by reference or a pass by value. So I can choose between both of them. Now, when it is available or enhanced, then I can call several APIs, C APIs or Unix type APIs in my CL program. Now this is, this becomes easy for us to call that. Now this is the prototype of the C API access that is a procedure uh, level API and this is the first parameter this is the second parameter so this is basically the path which we want to basically test whether it is accessible it exists or not and this is the mode so in which mode we want to uh, check whether it is accessible or not, whether that file exists, whether that is exe we have an execute access on that, we do have write or read access. So we can pass different modes based upon that. So if you see in the below, you will find the values of those modes. So for file exist, it's zero. For execute access, it's one. For write access, it's two. And for read access, it's four. Now, this was the PR which is defined in the RPG program. That is 10i0 and we are calling the access procedure, external pro procedure. This is the pointer value because this is passed by reference and this is passed by value. So now, and this returns an integer. So which basically tells us whether the path exists or not or it is accessible or not. So if it is zero, it is exist or accessible. If it is minus one, it is not exist. It does not exist or it is not accessible at all. So this is uh, what the background about this, that why we are doing this video here, uh, because earlier there was no support and then we got the support in the call PRC command in CL. So that allows us to call the IFS C API, that is Unix type APIs in CL itself. So we don't need to go to the RPG program and do this. So if you want to read more about this access API in RPG using an RPG, you can get the code from here. You can read from this website where you will get the code in both in all formats that is fixed free or fully free. Now let's move on to the main topic that we are discussing and let's move on to the IBM I green screen where I will be showing you the example that how I did this. So this is the program. Let me open this. Let me open this in edit mode. Here you can see that I am taking an input parameter to this program, which is the directory location. So I want to check whether a directory exists or not. So I'll pass the location of that directory here to this program. 
and this will then check using the access API whether that exists or not. So what I did is I declare that direct direct tree location variable that is star char and length of 512. Now I defined again in another variable dir loc null and that's 513 length and type of a star char that is one more than this one. That's uh, uh, this is why we took this uh, is uh, we need to pass the null trimmed strings to the Unix type APIs, C APIs basically. So we cannot pass the string as it is which, which we are getting from the user. So we need to null trim that. Basically we need to append that null after the data and then trim that and then to pass to the API. So that's why we took, the, took this variable. Here the mode, mode is type of integer, return value is again integer. And then you can see move type is in teaser and here we do not given any value so the default value is zero so that's what i would say is we basically want to check the existence of any particular directory or a file now here we define the null that we want to append so null is this hex zero zero so it is defined in hexadecimal value so we basically took this as one length of type character uh, we defined one more, two more variables which are going to be used by the error API. So I also use the error number API, this one, and that will return me the pointer. So error pointer, this is the pointer variable. And then you can see error number which is based upon this pointer variable. So basically I actually want to know what the error number being returned. So what I can do is I can base an a uh, variable that an integer variable on that error pointer so using the storage as the star beast and then i can get to know that what's the error number is now here you can see the first step of this program these are the declarations variable declarations now this from here the program starts so this is the first step where i will actually uh append the null to the directory location which is being passed by the user so i'll first trim that and then we'll add the null to it at the last now this string is the final string that i'll be passing to the api so what i did is i have to pass two parameters if you see here you need, you'll get i have to pass two parameters so i pass two parameters here just take f4 so this is the access api I just took F4, just wait. Seeing some issue uh, in the network. So let's wait for a minute. Let me take escape to cancel this. There's no issue in the network. I perhaps Press some other key that caused that. So let me take a four here. So it's causing network issue actually. So let me take short escape two again. Open it in the display mode. I'm not going to take a four on that again because that's not opening. So if I took if I'm going to call the access that is the procedure level API from the CL program using the call PRC command. Now I first pass the directory location. So I'll pass the parameter by reference and will pass the default value, which is passed actually available in this variable. And then I pass the mode. That's what I need to pass the path and the mode. So mode value is basically by value so it is passed by value so we can see that now we can assign by ref that is by reference or by value by value well star by value these two special values are uh, available in the call prc command so which we can specify with the parameter to basically tell that this is passed by reference or this is passed by value and here the return value so that return value if you see this is an teaser that's what 
will get after the execution of this API. So these two things will be passed to the API and this will be returned. So if it is minus one, then it means that there is some error. Then we'll call the error number API that will return me a pointer and based upon that pointer, we'll get to know the what is the error number. Now, if the error number is 3025, then that means no such path or directory exists. So that's the one thing. And this is the end of this if condition and then end PGM. So the program gets ended. So first thing I'll do is I'll create a module over this. Just take 15 option, press F10 and then compile it with debug view star source. So this is module gets created. Just use this command create PGM to create a program. So it will be created in the current library and then press F10 then paste down here you can set the activation group as caller for now so the program is also created now I need to call this uh, program I can call it directly but if I call it from the uh, command line I'll, and I'll pass the string that is of 512 characters it will be an issue for me because it will append the if I'll pass, let's say slash home, slash easy class, something like that. But uh, after that, it will take the garbage values and it will cause an issue. So what I'll do, I'll write another program that will call this program. So if you see here, I just took this PGM and PGM here and I declare that directory location variable of type character and length 512. So basically what we are actually needing here in this program and then we set this value by slash home slash easy class one slash test directory so we want to check whether this exists or not i am not able to execute any command right now just take two so you can see we'll see that whether this is accessible or not and then we'll call this parameter so we'll call this parameter by passing this value so basically we are passing the path to this parameter from this program i took f3 just compile this by using option 14 that is the bldcl command and then set this as source So it is taking some time to compile it. So it is compiled now. Just do the debug of this program. Okay. Let me copy this. Just set this star yes star yes and press enter. Let's wait for the source to appear so that we could set the breakpoint. Now let me set the breakpoint at line number one and then call this program. I'll take F10 here. So if you see the directory location is blank for now. Now, after that, directory location becomes this, and then I'll pass this to the calling program. This one, so we'll see that we receive the correct string. Now, it will be append, it will append the null to this uh, path by trimming it first. So we basically have this value. We will not notice the null here. So if you see the hex value, then you will be able to uh, know that there is a null after the string gets end. Now we'll pass this this dir loc null to this by reference. I'll pass the mode. If you check the mode is zero, 
return value is zero for now. And once the CPI gets called, you will see the return value is zero, which means that there is no error and the path exists. So if I copy this and do the work link from here and we'll check if this exists. Yes, this exists. Let me check if this exists. No, this is this object is not found. We can see here. So let me copy this so that we can check this case as well. Let's call this again. Now the directory location is this. Now let's change it in debug mode. I'll pass this one instead of dir if i just take shift f10 from here and then going further the access api is return value zero now let's execute this by taking f10 so if the return value is minus one right now so once it is minus one it will go inside this condition and it will call this api error number and will retrieve the error pointer so if you see that error pointer is received and I want to check whether what is the error number. So based upon that error point number, uh, error number variable is based upon this error pointer. So I'll get to know what number is this. So error number is 3025. So 3025 means error, no such path or directory exists. So basically we are getting the correct results from our program. So the testing results are fine as well. So here now you got to know that how you can check an IFS directory existence CL program. So basically you can call the ILE Unix type APIs from ILE CL program and that will make your life easy if you want to do these types of stuff in your CL program. I know that you can do these all these things from the RPG very easily. Uh, because the support was there, but in CL, the support was not there up to V5R3, but from V5R3, we do have support, but it's still, it's still, uh, we don't have support of some things like, uh, uh, using pointer variables or all those things, uh, for the error number APIs, like that was introduced later V5R4, I think. So you can check that in what release that was uh, actually released or introduced. So these things uh, you can now do uh, with the latest versions you have of the IBM I. So now uh, you got to know one more thing in uh, and that's all actually. So thank you and have a nice time.